As the turbulent 20th century unfolded, you might have expected the Titanic disaster to fade from memory, and some that were involved in the tragedy may well have wished Titanic's legacy be forgotten about. The years went by, but the story of Titanic wouldn't go away. And in 1962, one man dies, still trying to clear his name. Captain Stanley Lord was vilified by the British inquiry as the man who could have saved all the lives on Titanic if he had taken action. But he didn't. His story is still controversial, but here's the version the 1912 inquiry decided to take in place. As Titanic was sinking, ships raced to the scene. But the closest to Titanic was Stanley Lord's ship, the Californian. She was around 15 miles away. Her crew saw a ship on the horizon and rockets launched into the sky, but Lord did nothing. The British inquiry came to the conclusion that if the Californian had responded uh, early to the lights that she saw in, in the night sky, she could have saved many, if not most, of the lives that were lost. But Captain Lord was indignant. He claimed he had no reason to believe Titanic was sinking. He received none of Titanic's distress signals because his radio room was unmanned, but that was common practice, and the rockets his crew saw gave no cause for alarm. In 1912, um, rockets at sea were not exclusively for um, purposes of, of indicating distress. They could be for any manner of reasons. They were frequently used for illumination, which wouldn't be, you know, unsurprising when you come to a, um, into an ice field and you want to know the extent of that field or whatever. It wouldn't be entirely surprising that rockets would be sent up. Nowadays, we're all familiar with um, a red uh, pyrotechnic at sea indicating distress. It was only post the Titanic disaster um, that red was introduced as a colour exclusively for distress. Nor did Captain Lord believe the ship he saw was actually Titanic. He believed it was a much smaller vessel. At the inquiry, this gave rise to a complicated dispute over Titanic's final position. Either the mighty ship had got it wrong in her distress signals or Captain Lord had mistaken the position of his ship, the Californian. The British inquiry um, came to a decision and made a finding that the Californian's stop position on that night was not accurate. Just try and imagine the level of prejudice and assumption that goes into concluding that it must be the small ship, the tramp steamer, that is to blame, and it couldn't be the magnificent new state-of-the-art superliner that has got his position wrong. Rear Admiral John Lang is a retired UK marine accident investigator. He believes the inquiry's findings from the Californian may have been badly flawed. He studied both the evidence on Titanic and the way the inquiries were conducted. Quite honestly, they were appalling. The questions which were not asked, the witnesses were never called, misinterpreting the answers, I think Lord was being treated as really the, the, the villain of the piece, yeah. which I think was unfair. Lord was not on trial, but he was judged nonetheless by the press and by his employers, the Leyland Line. In 1912, the popular press and so on managed to inveigh against Captain Lord and weigh in against him and suggest that this man was a mass murderer. A director of the Leyland Line, which operated the Californian, um, suggested very strongly that Captain Lord had to resign because of popular opinion. Lord lost his job, and right up until his death in 1962, was still fighting to clear his name, as the Titanic story was told and retold in print and on the screen. It was not until over 20 years after he died that a key piece of evidence was discovered that may prove Captain Lord had been unfairly treated. In 1985, the case of Stanley Lord was thrown wide open when divers discovered the wreck of the Titanic and she wasn't where she was expected to be. Titanic was found by a submarine 13 miles further east than she had broadcast in her distress messages. It may prove Captain Lord was right and the Californian was nowhere as close to the sinking ship as the inquiry chose to believe. 70 years after the disaster, some experts believe this finally vindicates Stanley Lord. What killed people was actually hypothermia and being very, very cold. So yes, he might have gone to the rescue, but 
with the best will in the world, I don't think he would have made much difference to what happened that night. But the way he has been treated, in my opinion, I think, I guess if I was a miscarriage of justice in, in this country. Captain Lord has been stripped out, hollowed out, and turned into a, a mere cipher, a, you know, a destination for everybody's prejudices and dislikes. Whereas in fact, it's robbing us of the real truth, and that is how a ship could go to sea by permission of the Board of Trade with too few lifeboats. And that ultimately the responsibility stays with the Titanic, going too fast in too dangerous conditions, gambling with those people's lives and losing that gambler.